thanks for this nice introduction and thanks for having me here tonight to um, give you a small introduction on the Open Structures project. Oops. Uh, the Open Structures project is a research uh, project that focuses on the feasibility of an open modular construction model. Now, why an open modular construction model? Because modular construction is one of the fundamental and one of the most important principles in sustainable building. And let's, uh, let's have a look at LEGO to, um, to explain this. Um, a Lego car is actually not a Lego car. A Lego car is a bunch of uh, Lego parts that have been assembled and that form a car. But that's just the beginning, and every kid knows that. Because a Lego car has the ability to grow, it has the ability to adapt itself, and it has the ability to evolve over time. So modular designs are designs that incorporated time in their design. And that's what makes them resilient. That's what makes them adaptable to change. And that's something that we might need in the future. Of course, Lego cars, they don't stay Lego cars. You can also decide to take them apart and to build something else out of it. And what is also nice about Lego is that it actually can't really break. If you take a Playmobil car and you drop it on the floor, then chances are big that it it breaks, that the hull breaks, and the whole object becomes instantly waste. Now, if you drop a Lego car, then um, it might break as well, but it will be much easier to repair because you can just replace the broken parts. Or you can just decide to take it apart and again um, put it in your collection to later on build something else from it. Oh, OK. <laughs> So over time, uh, people have built um, uh, plenty of modular systems, um, not only in hardware, such as with toys, Mekono, uh, in furniture, or even in architecture. But uh, we also start to see modular constructions uh, within software. And of course, Wikipedia is one of the most uh, known, well-known examples of this. But that's quite a difference between modular hardware and modular software. What we've seen is that in modular software, um, it's mostly built up uh, from a hierarchical model, where you have one entity, one designer, or one producer that produces a whole system that produces all the blocks from A to Z, uh, copyrights it, and then uh, brings it to the market. So what you get here is you get a very, uh, a very uh, um, clear distinction between the producer and the end user, and you also uh, generate end users that are passive consumers because they don't really have the possibility to improve the system because the system is protected or the objects are protected. Whereas with Wikipedia, it's uh, actually a system where all design uh, a small part of a bigger system for all. And this is based, of course, on the new network methodologies that we know. Now, this is actually... Uh, or what the Open Structures project proposes is to, uh, or questions is, can we build a kind of Lego that works according to the network model? So can we build a kind of modular system to which everybody who wants uh, can add their own parts and components? And then I'm not only thinking about end users, but also about companies. Now, Modular software is based on shared uh, and open programming code, such as HTML. The open structures model is based on a shared geometrical grid, which is built up out of squares of 4 by 4 centimeter. And from this grid, people design parts. And as you can see here, these are all parts designed by different people, but you can very clearly see the connection uh, to the grid, which makes that all these parts are somehow compatible and belong to the same system. People also design objects uh, in which they apply the, this grid, and that also contains certain parts. And uh, again, here, these objects are not conceived as static objects. They are conceived as dynamic puzzles that have the ability to evolve. And I would like to show you now some examples of what people have built and how they have evolved over time. 
This bike, for example, was designed by uh, one person, but it was conceived so that it could be taken apart into different parts. It was then given to the next person who uh, built another front part and, uh, and attached it to it. So what you saw was that you got a bike that evolved from a normal bike to being uh, a cargo bike. This part, for example, was uh, designed and printed by one person. It was then used in this coffee grinder by another person. And then a third person took again this coffee grinder apart, uh, copied, the, copied the part, improved it, so made a new version out of it, and integrated it in his water boiler, which you can see here. So again, you can see, you can start to see parts floating from one object to another. And you can start to see how parts are used in uh, various ways and how people are building things together. This box uh, was conceived to and desi designed and conceived to be taken apart. And it was able to be reconfigured in a kind of table structure. Now, we used the box when we were exhibiting the project on certain spaces, and then at the place, we took it apart and we integrated it in the table structures of the exhibition. Here you can see the exhibition. And after the exhibition, we took it apart and we reconfigured all the wood into um, the interior of my own design studio. So again, what you see is you get a series of objects designed by different people, but that somehow are all compatible to one another because they all have the same kind of pro object DNA. So they all, um, everything becomes interchangeable and you start to see the emergence of a bigger puzzle. You also start to see the emergence of a modular system where you no longer have a uniform identity because you can see that the different identities and the different signatures of the people who collaborate is uh, integrated in the, in the overall system. People also tested the system on architecture. They imagined uh, puzzle structures where um, we could have shrinking or growing buildings according to people's current needs and where we could have building components that would float within the larger structure. People also imagined flexible uh, building uh, construction knots that were able to adapt uh, to local building materials, again, because the knot itself is a dynamic puzzle on its own. What we saw was that some people uh, really applied the grid in a very rigid way and making the grid very visible in the object, and other people just almost abandoned the grid completely and they just used the assembly point pattern uh, in their design. So what we noticed was that actually it wasn't all about the dimensions of the grid, it was actually more about the assembly hole pattern. Because that's actually the interface where different parts can meet and can be connected to one another. Uh, other people then again also completely abandoned the square, but they used the inner circle to make their uh, design their objects and their components. So. By doing all this test, by asking people to work with it, we also learned on uh, what the grid could do and what it couldn't do and how we could improve it. So we decided to integrate the circles in the grid. All objects and all uh, components are collected in an online database that allows people to um, look, rate and trade and discuss their own objects or objects of different people. It also allows them to work further on uh, other people's objects or parts simply by downloading the 3D file and by uh, playing around with it in 3D software to then test it in real. Uh, currently, we're developing, next to this online database of parts, we're developing a kind of physical database of parts, a kind of space uh, where all the parts and all the objects that have been designed are collected and where um, people can come to puzzle and, and to play with uh, the objects, to take them apart, to reconfigure them and to maybe make new parts. So as a designer, my interest is no longer in designing the object, 
but it's uh, in designing the object system. It's in designing the, the services and the, the spaces that emerge around these objects. And it's also... Actually, what I'm doing is I'm, not, I'm no longer cooking the meal. I'm actually designing the kitchen in order for people to be able to cook. So uh, this is where we are at this very moment with this project. Um, it's still, it's, it's a process and it's still in full development. And at this point, it's still more a question than an answer. And it still has a lot of issues to be resolved and um, a lot of uh, uh, questions to be answered. But what is, what was rewarding was the whole process to how we got uh, to, uh, to how this whole project is developing because as a designer, it, um, you no longer have to design the perfect object. You no longer have to uh, make something and then have people buy it. You just make something and uh, you propose it to people. You no longer uh, um, ask the question, uh, what do you think of it? But you ask the question, yeah, what, how do, would you imagine it? What could it become? How would you improve it? How could you make it better? Uh, and it, uh, it allows you to look different at things. It allows you um, not to judge an object for what it is, but to imagine an object for what it can become. And I think that's where the big value of the project is. Thanks a lot.